Hey, what's up, everybody? This is indeed the E Man. Chilling like the villain, singing like Bob Dylan, keep it on the low with some double stuff. Oh, yeah. All right, so <laughs> back on December 10th, 2020, uh, my life changed. Uh, I, I started a podcast, and my very first guest, uh, I, I, what can I say? I mean, she she's the R&B icon. She was a part of two very legendary groups, formerly of In Vogue and Lucy Pearl. Um, I had a great time talking to her, and guess what? She's back. Yay! She has, she's rocking the Mickey Mouse shirt. Is that Mickey or Minnie? Oh, Minnie. Yes. <laughs> nice. And um, it's great just to have her back, man. And um, she has relaunched her YouTube channel, which I'm loving. I, yeah. It's three episodes in, and I love the positive, uh, the positive words she has to say. And um, I just want to introduce the. I can say my friend, Dawn Robinson. <laughs> Dawn Robinson is in the house. What's going on, Dawn? <laughs> oh, yes, we are friends. You can say that. You can say family, too. Right yeah. on. Right. Thank you so much. I, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day. What, would you be mine? Um, <laughs> um, just, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just want to say this. Um, thank you so much for being a part of that first episode. I mean, everything was on a win. Oh, my gosh. Thank yeah, you. you. It was so great. It was like. Um, that's why I asked you the other day. I was like, wasn't I your first interview? If I remember, because I did 105 interviews at the time. And yeah. I just remember you were so excited and brand new to you. And it was all that. So I'm excited that I'm proud of you. Okay. Thank you. you have come so far. I asked you the other day, uh, if you, if your show was going to be, if our interview was going to be live today and you said, um, no, I no longer do live interviews. My, my audience. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you have an audience now? Excuse me, mister. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am. You your audience um, that you do pre-recorded interviews. So mm -hmm. I have to tell you how proud I am of you. Like, that's, Thank you. It's amazing to me to see that you actually made this work. You made it into, I get. I don't know if you have a nine to five or you made this like your 100%. Like, oh, no, this is not. I got a nine to five still. Yes, ma'am. You do? But still, mm -hmm. this is like something that you took seriously and you built up. So, you know what I mean? That, that's pretty commendable. Thank you. I appreciate it. And yeah. I've, I've had I had an opportunity to talk to a lot of amazing people, including yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I stopped doing lives is because, you know, in the very beginning, my sister was making a lot of my flyers. So shout out to my sister, Jackie. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Jackie. Uh, yes. And so like. A lot of times, sometimes uh, a guest, but you know, I had like, and in, in, in the first year I had like four guests kind of flake out on me and the flyer mm -hmm. was already made. And I'd be like, oh, you know, I can imagine how frustrating what that was for my sister. So, and then yeah. it's kind of, and then also when you do the lives on Instagram, you're not able to um save them to your phone. So oh. our first interview, a lot of, like, when I, when I um started doing my uh, podcast through Anchor, which is now Spotify for Podcasters. Nobody has ever heard our first interview. The only way they can listen to our first interview is going on my Instagram. You know what I mean? So that's why that's why I'm like, you know, I, I got rid of the um doing the live Instagram. So it was a it was a lot of fun at first, but I, I just right. decided not to do those anymore. Yeah, you worked it out though. You figured out what works for you. So good yeah. for you. And that sucks that they would just like I, I was glad today that we didn't do a live because I wasn't quite ready when you called me. Um, or ready to call into the, remember, I, I had a problem with the Wi-Fi. Right. So that right. have a little extra time to kind of, if things are going wrong at first, to adjust it and get it right. right. So it is good in a sense, but I love the lives because the fans get to participate, you know? Yeah, that 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 is something I miss too, because a lot of my family, you know, um, got a chance to see that interview live and it was a lot of fun. Um, there are some questions. I, I've watched that live. In, I'm not live. I watch. Yeah, I watched that live interview a number of times. Oh. And one of the one of the questions I cannot believe I forgot to ask you was like, um, and the the thing that reminded me of it was I recently watched this movie with Jamie Fox and Tommy Lee Jones, which is on Amazon Prime. And uh -huh. there's a part is a part of the um part of the movie the song What a Man, What a Man, What a Man. It comes on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh my God, I never asked you about that video and the making of that video and working with salt and pepper. So how was that? Oh my God, that was amazing. I see, I was talking about this the other night because I went into a makeup store and Kevin Aquan, who did our makeup at that time, 
now has a makeup line and unfortunately he passed away but uh. Uh, that whole thing was just it was surreal first of all we're working with salt and pepper like are you kidding me right. icon, okay hip-hop icons and we admired them and they felt the same way about us so now when we see them it's like family uh it was a little bit abrasive at first because they were like, okay, wait a minute. We never get, so now we got to work with Kevin Kwan. Like he's expensive, but we have invoked. So we, you guys give us a budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit salty about that. A little tiny bit. Um, little things like that. I remember like, wow. But, and then when I see the video today, I'm like, oh my God. Cause I had on this really super cute outfit. And I remember salt standing behind me and talking to the director and next thing I know the director came to me and said Dawn um come with me in the back and then they made me change my outfit and I was like what? wow everybody had on short shorts and we were all like Maxine still has hers on in the video Saw has hers on in the video and all that so I don't know if it was her doing that but none needless to say we had such a great time like all the choreography the history of having Tupac in there, even though he couldn't show his face. Right. Um, he, exactly. He was in there with Pep, uh, Sandy. Um, yeah, it was like just surreal. What an what an amazing time. Because I believe, uh, okay, so Tupac was in there. Tretch was in there too. Exactly. What, the third guy was, that was with Spinderella, was that Bobby Brown or no? Ooh. Wow, I can't even see on your mark go. Um, and the only the reason I ask that is because like, uh, there's a there's a part in Spinderella's rapping where she says, "Well, you know, my name is not Susan," which is like a Whitney was, Houston song. So yeah. I wasn't sure if that was Bobby. It kind of looked oh, like Bobby. Exactly. Um, he always has heavy conversations for the mind, which results to me because the men are hard to find. Oh, fine. Yeah. I don't know. Well, he wasn't there that day if it was him. And they did all their vignettes, what they call those little um, sections vignettes. But he wasn't they weren't there the days that we were there. But the fact that they were in the video was like amazing to us. Um, and I don't I don't remember if she said it was him or not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was. And I can't see why he wouldn't show his face. Right. I, I could see the face, but it kind of looked like him, but he had a do-rag on Also, I didn't ask you in the first interview, uh, one of my favorite shows growing up was Rock, and you guys did the theme song for Rock. What was yeah. that like, the, in meeting Charles S. Dutton and meeting Ella Joyce and everybody? Oh, the whole cast. My God, are you kidding me? Um, Charles Dutton is very, very holistic, and that's when we started learning about holistic stuff. Like Really? Yeah, alternative medicine. He took us to our first... TMI, but uh, he took us to our first um, colonoscopy. What is it called? Colon irrigation. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we were like, wow, but he paid for it because he, he feels like the colon is where, and it's true. Um, oh, yeah. Where, where disease starts is, is in the colon. So he took us to our first um, colon irrigation. It was like, whoa. So he just opened our eyes to a lot of stuff. Uh, kombucha back then was, was not a big deal. Today, right, right, yeah, yes. And I think he's the one. He is the one who told me how to make it at home. And you make you use a mushroom, and then you put a yeah. lot of sugar in the bowl and cover it up, and then it makes its own babies. Yeah, he he's very much into a lot of holistic care. Um, and his wife, well, at the wife at the time, Debbie. Um, so really, really powerful people, and the whole cast was amazing. We yes. we felt like family after that. Like I just heard the other day, oh, live your life today. Um, the um uh, the theme song that we did. Yes. Yes. For, yep. Yep. And I was yeah. like, wow. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. It was a great, great time. Love, love that show a lot. A lot of Me too. a lot of real grounded issues on that show. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm gonna ask you a question. We're not gonna get too. We're not gonna dig deep into like um, in Vogue and 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 Lucy Pro because we did that on the first interview. So if people want to watch that, is really unedited and we we go. It's really raw. You can exactly. go on my Instagram, Mr. Uh, Mr. E, uh, 1986. But I do want to ask you, do you know who you are? You're Dawn Robinson. Like, if anybody <laughs> were to, like, if an alien went down, came down to Earth and were to ask you who you are, what would you tell them? Oh, my God. E.T., um, phone home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
that they would even care at all. Um, that I've been part of two amazing groups um, that I still can't even believe myself. Like, it's just like, wow. And I'm very proud of the work that I've done. Very, very proud of the work that I've done. Um, and we were the shit. That's what I would say to Mr. Alien Man. But <laughs> we were amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, now I can watch the videos from out, outside looking in. As if I'm okay. like, whoa, I think one of the biggest, one of the things that I'm most proud of with and Vogue, it was the fact that we did that uh, Alicia Keys uh, BET. That was like, just, I think we had like two minutes each, not even, literally. It's not like, like we, we walked across that stage and down those steps and hit it and we were gone. And it was that quick, but it was so powerful. It was so impactful. And it showed mm. how fucking raw we are. Like, raw was the shit. Too bad. Too bad that it fell apart. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I could tell, like, honestly, just talking to you and even talking before we started recording how, you know, like you said, for the first two years, uh, well, from, from 2020 to, like, I want to say 2022, you did a lot of Instagram live interviews. And I, yeah. it seems like like uh, that allowed you to get a lot out and off your chest. And you it seem did. a lot calmer now. You know what I mean? You mm. seem like you and people need to do that. People need to rant and vent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like you're a lot happier now. Right. It was like therapy for me. It really yeah. was, man. It was like therapy. And, and I kept saying each time I did a new interview, I'm like, OK, this is interview number 82. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys not tired of hearing about and they were like no we want to know i'm like oh my god like it's just amazing that people wanted to hear the story and hadn't heard it enough by the time i did the 82nd the 100th interview like still you got and i had to literally cancel another uh 43 or 46 interviews that i still had i just didn't know how you wanted that i still had in the books and I was like, you guys, I'm I'm burnt out. I'm completely yeah. talked about. And but I'm tired of hearing my own mouth. You guys have got to, the fans have got to be tired of hearing my mouth about it. It's like, I had to cancel just to like breathe. Yeah. So but it was really like therapy. It was cathartic, as I say, um, to be able to talk about it. Because I never got that chance when I was first kicked out the group. So to, to be able right. to talk about it, tell the world what really happened or my side of what happened was really amazing. So I'll never forget that, 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 you know what it did too, Emmanuel, it opened the door for the fans to know who I am as a person and, and to yeah. hear what really happened from my side. You know, they only heard the girls and they only heard what they had to say about it. Uh, they never really knew what happened to me? They just knew that one day I was there and the next time they saw the new album, EV3, yeah. I was not there anymore. Yeah. So I was grateful, really grateful that you guys wanted to talk to me about Absolutely. That. Yeah. Because, you know, it's funny you say that. Like, literally, I, I remember because the, back then there was no internet, right? So I uh -huh. remember going, going to the record store and seeing whatever the single whatever and you're not on there i'm like wait a minute where, where's dawn because we didn't know what? there wasn't anything to keep us there up to date about what was going on right right and i thought that was i thought that was very irresponsible on behalf of the um record company and the girls too it's like you guys knew that you did not create this success by yourself and you right. knew that i was part of that and I would never, maybe they decided with the record company that it was best to not discuss it, act like she wasn't here. How can you do that? How can you, how can you, oh, it's like having a child and acting like the father isn't a part of it or the mother isn't, she had nothing to do with this. Like, come on now. We, even if she's not a good person or he's not a good person, this child was not here on their own. It took two people to do this. So in my case, it was, it took four women to create this group together and um, right. for them to do it like that. It was like, okay, I'll have my time. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, 2020, sure. 2020 was a big year for COVID. It was a big year for like yeah. something 
drastic on the planet and, and something drastic in my life to change so so hugely. I never imagined, Emmanuel, that I would do 105 interviews. And this is the thing. Mm. The fans are still saying like, oh my God, we saw your interview with this person in 2020 and you were amazing and you talked about this and we didn't know this. And I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. They're still there. Yeah. And my truth is out. And so now the fans understand exactly what happened. You know what I mean? It's like, I had my say. Yes, absolutely. And it closer to the fans because of that. You know? Yes. And I, I actually had people come up to me or members of my family like, yeah, I didn't know that they were they were they almost were signed to La Face because they 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 we talked about that during our interview. Is this a lot of a lot, even I was I was I didn't even know you know a lot of stuff I yeah. didn't even know. Yeah, there was a there was a question I always and I'm pretty sure a lot of people always want to know. Um, I'm surprised that you guys and Boys to Men never did anything um together. Was that ever like a thought or a you know because you guys to me in Vogue and Boys to Men to me those are the two groups you guys set the bar vocally, you know what I mean? Wow. So I'm surprised you guys never collaborated and did anything together. Was that ever a thought? No, that's so great. And thank you so much for that huge compliment. That's amazing. Um, no, we never talked about music together, but we did re We did do shows together. So Seriously? I have, oh yeah, we did a few shows, live shows. Yeah, we toured, I wouldn't say tour together, but we did some shows together. Um, wow. The... So we, every time they would come off stage because they would open for us. <laughs> <laughs> so every time they would come off stage, we would say, um, "That was a good show. You guys did a good job." But we're getting ready to do what you guys did in heels. <laughs> so, so you can't top us, and then it was like that. Like we're getting ready to do what you guys just did, but we got heels on, and we're doing the same damn thing and better. And we would joke with them about it. Um, and then sometimes we would open for them. So. It just depends on what the headliner, I mean, what the uh, promoter wanted to do as far as headlining is concerned. But oh, okay. really, like brothers, like family. Yeah. Wow. I, I just we thought. Music together. Well, we talked about music together. That would be incredible. Do you know how incredible that would have been? Like, seriously, that would be incredible. Like, you guys yeah. come together and do a song. That, man, I can't even imagine. That would have so, been amazing. You just relaunched your YouTube channel. Yeah. And I love what you're putting out. Like the first step. Is... I'm so proud. <laughs> yes, it's so cool. I love what you said. Like I guess it was it was really meant for me to hear it because the the first episode, not to spoil anything, but the first mm -hmm. episode is called Just Start. Just start. Yep. And I love that because honestly, I've been doing this for going on um and December 10th will be my third year. And yeah, and I just I feel like that's all you really have to do is just start something, you know. Exactly. So, can you like kind of like you know go into it a little more? Like, like what you what do you um what do you want people to get from your your content? But also this first episode just start. What do you so, want people to get from the episode? The reason that yeah, the reason that I I called it that is because it took me forever. Now, from the time that I did the interviews with you guys in 2020. It may have been you, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it may have been you um, and a few other interviewers were like, Dawn, you'd be so great at doing your own podcast. And the first person that said it, I was like, oh, that's so nice. Thank you very much. You know? Right. And then it was like another person, another person, another person. I was like, okay, there's four or five people that have said, and then the fans started chiming in about, it would be so great for you to do your own. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. They, they're serious about this so um i was I, I took it serious at that point and uh one of the people that i did an interview with started helping me with my who was actually helping me with my page now my channel gotta remember see it's a new conversation <laughs> <laughs> it really is new terms that i'm using and, and uh it's just a whole new world for me so i'm like i gotta remember the word subscribe please subscribe to my channel and channel yeah. not page um so yeah i was like i was putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and i kept making excuses as to why and I, I didn't want to start my um youtube channel 
And, and then I finally did it. And I'm like, okay. So that's why I had to say that. Just start. Even if yeah. you don't have pieces together, even if you don't have the proper situation or location or equipment. You know, there's a guy that I watch on YouTube. He's a, a millionaire now. And I think he had polio when he was a child. He's a black man, actually. And oh, he had wow. a child. Yeah, it overcame that. And now he teaches people how to become millionaires in their own right. And um, he was saying, you know, a lot of people have to he, he started his YouTube channel as well. And he said at first he didn't take it seriously. And he only had a couple of people on there. And then he started watching some of these young people on YouTube become millionaires. He was like, wait a minute. You got to be kidding me. Like YouTube can make it. And he started studying them. And there was a book that he talked about that I actually got the book. My assistant um, bought the book for me and we both have it. So now we're reading it. Uh, YouTube, I think his name is Daryl Eves. And then um, there's a guy named Mr. Beast. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Beast, yeah. You know Mr. Beast on, on oh, YouTube? Yeah. yeah, no, you've heard of him. So um, Mr. Beast actually did his foreword in his book. And um, they t they talked. So when he, he said that we got the book, and I'm like, wow, I'm starting to learn a lot more about YouTube and taking it more seriously. Because I thought it was just... It's a place that I go and get information, but it's also, I thought it was for young, young people. Like it's a younger uh, John uh, demographic. I thought it was a younger demographic. So I wasn't taking it serious either until I saw the man that I was talking about who does the seminars who had polio. Right. And he's, he became a millionaire mostly because of his channel. I mean, that to me is, I, it blew me away. So I was like, let me take, let me take this more serious too. And I was like, let me just build my YouTube channel up. So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Building how, it up. How old is the guy who has polio when he's doing his YouTube? His name is something golden. I'll I'll send you his name. And then you okay. can put his uh YouTube if you want to and add that underneath the uh the interview for us. But um I would say because he's all he's got all white hair, white beard. Okay. Very handsome because of the white hair. He looks very stunning. Um, and I would say maybe he's in his 60s. Wow. Yeah, he's got a full hair, of white hair here and then white on his beard and mustache. Um, something golden, I think his name is. I should okay. know better. But he's, I watch him all the time. He's amazing. But, I, 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 that's that's that is. I bring that up because I feel like especially now it really doesn't matter how old you are it's like you said just get started you know what i'm saying you can do just that start. just start something you know what i'm saying and you find your niche and you hopefully find maybe you, you'll get your audience and and things will work out and even well, this is what they're saying though too because there's a few people that i've studied like okay when i'm gonna do something and i've never done it before i go all in i study I take notes, I do seminars or webinars or whatever to learn more on the subject that I want to do. Like, I'm I'm ridiculous with it because I don't want to be out here trying to do something just and, and assume that because I'm a celebrity that people are going to follow me. Right. That I'm automatically going to be successful at it. I have to work just as hard as anyone else. You know what I mean? And, and like, so, and I want to be great at it. Like, and I know... You're going to have mistakes. You're going to make mistakes when you first start. I don't care who you are. Literally, oh, yeah. like Beyonce um, could have a problem with her, you know, just whatever, whatever she wants to start. So we all we're all human and we have issues, but you got to get in there. And that was the one thing I kept saying to myself. You got to start this. So after I did and, and oh, that was the point. A lot of the people that I studied on YouTube about, there was this one girl named uh, Jennifer, I think her name is. And she was saying she did a video just on people who want to start a YouTube channel but are too afraid. Okay. And it was me. And I was like, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm afraid to start because I was, I was so like, how do I edit? Um, even though, I have somebody helping me edit. There's certain things that I want to do, like thumbnails. I realize doing a thumbnail is what gets people on your page. There's I can't assume that everybody that finds my channel is a fan. Right. 
You know what I mean? And so I like the people that are not fans. I love my fans being there too, but I like the fact that I see a couple people in there that are like, wow, you know, I needed to, to hear your message because I wanted to start this business and I was too afraid to do it. And, or I wanted to, you know, it's like whatever you want to start. I needed to hear your message. I'm like, oh my God, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that but with, with, with us as celebrities, we do assume that the fans are going to be there. Right. And I, so I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to have fans on there. It's going to be a lot of people. <clears throat> and I'm grateful for that. Excuse me. I'm grateful for that. But at the same time, I can't assume that all the followers that are going to find me are just fans, like I said. So anybody that wants to start anything, there's like, you know what I mean? My message is for them, too. Like, you know, so just start that was like that was me for a very very long time like you said 2020 here we are in 23 it took yeah. this long to just start my youtube channel that's insane well at least, like at least you started you know what i mean and, and I, I love i love how you're giving advice it's not like you're just giving advice to the people that are listening or watching but you're mm -hmm. you're you're talking to yourself as well kind of to remind yourself you know because it's Mo so easy to give up go ahead i'm sorry no, it's so easy to give up, man, because like there are moments like there are moments, especially now yeah. with what's going on with the writer strike and everything like that. There are yeah. moments I was just like, man, I said, I, I don't even want to do it anymore. But I'm like, no, I, I I kept going because, you know, if I don't, if I stop doing it, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be where I started. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, so I just said, I'm just going to keep on going. And the reason I'm doing it to, to begin with is because. I want to give people who I watched on TV and the people's music that I've listened to, I want to say thank you. Exactly. That's, that's that's the whole purpose of it. That's why I call it a special <laughs> delivery show. <laughs> thank you so much. But not only that, if you stop now, all the hard work that you put into it is for nothing. Yeah. You lose and you lose like all that hard work for nothing. So you can't stop. We won't let you stop. Okay. Uh, uh, really <laughs> let you stop. So yeah, you got to keep going. You're good. I'm glad. Thanks. I'm glad. What I'm grateful for, and this is why, because I was like, okay, do I have enough subject matter to talk about on my show? Everything that I talk about is stuff that I've gone through myself or am going through. And I think I said that in one of the videos already. Mm. Like, you know, this is like literally going through this on my own is, is all the subject matter that I need, you know? Yeah. It's like, seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I love in in the second episode, you said don't lose sight of who you are, and I, I, I and you said it's okay to be weird. I said mm -hmm. I love I love that you said that because it yeah. is so easy to do that, especially yeah. like you said when you're young and you're living in the household and you know what I'm saying you think you're like the black sheep of the family and right. you know but and nobody really listens to you like that. Nobody understands. Yeah. 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 The, do you want to expound on that? Because that was that was a really great um message. Thank you. You know, it's funny that most of the people that are commenting, see, I'm still trying to figure out the whole YouTube world, right? So I yeah. thought to follow YouTube, I would do it on my social media. And it's like, no, because it's not driving traffic to my YouTube page. To do, so I just now, uh, for the third one, for my third episode, I just took a screenshot of one of the happiest moments in my, in my video. And everybody loves that too. And now it's making people have to go to my YouTube channel. But at the same time, it was like the reason that I said that whole weird thing is because people ostracize you in families. People ostracize you at your job. People ostracize you. In my case, it was in my group. Mm. I was I wasn't so much weird, but it was like feisty. I say what's on my mind. I stand up and say the truth, whether you like it or not. And, yeah. and it's not hurt anybody, but it's I'm not going to not speak my truth just because you don't like what I have to say. And I've mm. always been outspoken like that. I like that about myself. Love that about myself. I never want to be what someone else wants me to be. So that weird part was in my family too. And it's still in my family. Like, yeah, Dawn wears black lipstick. She's weird. Okay. Call me what you want. It's okay. But that black lipstick is now becoming popular. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, uh, there's a young lady that I follow her page. I'm so proud of her. Um, she has a lipstick line called uh, T 
is it LTLB or something, TBL? TLB, I think it is. Lip bar, the lip, the lip bar, so TLB, yeah. TLB, and okay. Exactly, yeah, she's now she's in, um, I think she's in Target as well as CVS. Wow. But yes, no, she's no joke. She was, her and her partner, excuse me, were on the Shark Tank. And okay. Mr. One on the Shark Tank told them that they're not going to make it because they turned on the deal that he had for them. And he told them that they were roaches to him, colorful roaches. He tells that oh, to wow. anybody that's, yeah, that rejects it. It wasn't just that they were black women. And um, and so now to see her and her partner in in Target and in CBS, it's like, what if they would have said, oh, you know, Mr. Wonderful turned us down, so we're going to give up. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, you're weird. You're different. You might have something that nobody else understands, but if you understand it, that's all that matters. That's all yeah. that matters. I don't need anybody else to understand me. You know what I mean? So that yes. weird part is what sets you. We can be like everybody else and walk through life like everybody else, or we can be our own selves. And that's what I meant by that. Be who the fuck you are. You are yeah. amazing. You know? So, yeah, that's what I meant by the weird part. And, and I love what you said, like, you're not just your job, because every day, like, like, like I told you, I work a nine to five. And yes. every day I get off work, I have to take a shower and shake off that stuff because I got to remind myself, like, I'm not that job. This exactly. is just, this is just a stepping stone. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's a yeah. way to make it. That's it. But you mm -hmm. have other endeavors. You have other things outside of that job. And like I said, in one of them, and if you see, I, now I'm starting to get like, okay, which episode was that? But I've only done three. But one of them I said, um, your job is a means to an end, basically. It's just a means to an end. It's a way for you to make a living. And and mm -hmm. your boss had a dream. And you're fulfilling his dream every day by going to that job and making him yeah. richer, making him more money. So it's like you still have your boss facilitated his dream. And you're ignoring yours. Yeah. You know what you're I mean? It's a like a small cog in a in a large machine. Absolutely. You're important because he couldn't do it without you, though. Right. That's true. But he, he doesn't want to let you know that. No right. boss, nobody is in an island. Nobody does anything on their own. It mm -hmm. took our group to make Invoke happen. It was me, Cindy Terry, Maxine. It was a record company. It was a bunch of people that came together to make that happen. But now it's like I'm on my own. I'm making things happen on my own. So it's like, you are a part of something, but at the same time, you still have your own dream. You've got to facilitate that. Yeah. So, yeah, your job is only a means to an end. And when you come home, you wash that dream off and you have to continue doing your dream. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I hope you really? are doing. Well, I see that you are. Yeah, I I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying every day. You know, it's just like I, I literally had to get in the shower, shake, the, shake that off and like, you know, go out the door. Um, yeah. uh, and then the third episode is Yes, You Can. And that's mm -hmm. a really great episode because to me, you know, um, Emmanuel, I got to stop you for i I'm so grateful that you, you're so thorough. And I remember this about you, even in the first interview, like you're so right. thorough. You're welcome. Like you, you actually watched my, <laughs> I'm so grateful. I really am. Uh, Thank you. Welcome. Yes, again, that was the third one. Ah. Yes. It's, it's a great episode because like, thank you. There's so many um in life you, you hear a lot of no, you're gonna hear a lot of no's, you mm -hmm. know. Um, especially like you know, in the music industry, you know, you hear yeah. a lot of no's, no's, no, no, but you you know, you gotta tell yourself within at least this is what I got from the episode. You gotta tell yourself, yes, yes, I can, whatever exactly. whatever your dream may be, you know. That's right. That's yeah. right. Because the world is gonna reject you. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Even in my situation and being someone that the world knows my name, right. I still get all the time. Doors are not open to me just because I'm Dawn Robinson, formerly of In Vogue or Lucy Pearl, you know? So I, people are probably going to be like, well, but you have an advantage because of who you are. Yeah, but that doesn't mean, like I said, every door is open to me. So right. do it, even with my YouTube channel, it's not exactly what I want it to be because, like I said, I want the thumbnails. I want my intro. Um, and the guy that's helping me, I'm grateful for him. His name is Jay. Um, but he doesn't know everything about putting thumbnails together. He doesn't know how to do an intro. So I'm learning as I go along. I'm having to help myself. Yeah. I'm 
this work, you know what I mean, on my own. Um, and if it, there's anybody out there that knows how to do this and they hear this interview, if you know how to do this and you can help me, I would be grateful. Um, and it's not to slight Jay at all, but he, just, he doesn't know how to do it. He's like, oh, my God, I'm trying to figure it out. And he's trying his best to help me. But there's so much more to um, YouTube channel uh, than just putting out a video. It's like, I don't want to be that boring. I want the bells and whistles. I want sparks flying and all that stuff, you know. And yesterday, I literally, the first time, with persistence, because I have tried Chimp, uh, I think it's called Clip. Clip Champ, I've tried uh, Cap Cut, I've tried Canva. You talking about editing? Videos? Editing, Mojo, Mojo. Now I did Mojo yesterday for the first time. I did my first uh, intro, but it's still I I couldn't save it. When I sent it, finally saved it. At first I couldn't save it. Then when I finally saved it, I sent it to my uh assistant she was like oh diva she calls me diva she's like i don't love it it's too dark and i was like what like, together and i was so proud and she's just like no not really <laughs> what a choker <laughs> <laughs> but she, I, I need her to be honest at all times and i'm grateful that she is but i'm gonna keep trying so it was like okay she said it was too dark but she didn't say it was ugly so okay. I'm just gonna try something else, but you got yes, you can. Yes, you can. You you like I said, a hundred percent in that interview, uh, in that episode. See, I gotta remember the language again, Manuel. Emmanuel. <laughs> it's in learning, that, it's just a it's a learning process. <laughs> exactly. The learning curve. Yes, it is. Um, but in that episode I said, um, you have to you gotta keep trying things that you're not sure of. You gotta put mm. yourself Get outside your comfort zone. Yep. And do things that you're just like, okay, can I do that or not? I don't know, but I won't know if I don't try. Exactly. How many things have we gotten through? You've gotten through a hundred percent. That's what I was gonna say. You've gotten through a hundred percent of the things that you thought were gonna take you out, like literally end you. Mm -hmm. I think you could get through, like, oh my god, my mom died, or my God forbid, you know what I mean? My father died. I was like, oh. I still feel it. I still feel like it literally happened this morning. That mm. hurt pain is still there. But I'm still here and you get through every day. It's like you adjust to what you have to adjust to when someone leaves. In that case, it was my dad passing away. And you just get through every day. When my dog passed away uh, last year, it was like 16 years of having him in my life. Like what? Yeah. So you work through things and... People total their cars and it's like, you don't think that they can get through. It's like, oh my God, I have no transportation. I don't know what to do. Or relationship ends or a job ends. And it's like, you survived. Yeah. You got through 100% of the things that you thought were going to be like, okay. Hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah, hundred percent of the things that we think, oh my God, if I if that happened to me, I couldn't make it through that. And you actually do. You actually have. You proved it yeah. to yourself already. So it's like, what's one more thing to try? If you if you fail at it, you just keep trying. Okay, you fail. Keep going. Just like you do every single time something happens and you fail. You don't give up on life and bury yourself in the backyard. You keep going. Mm -hmm. It's life. I, I um and when you talk about losing people like like losing my mom and my dad was really t and it, it's at the in the moment it's hard oh you my know what God. I'm saying and I still feel it but the thing yeah. is I think I think people say you should never look in the past but I think looking in the past when you're dealing with something in the present to see where you came from yeah. is a is a real benefit you know what I mean like I'd be like oh yeah I did go through that so I can make it through this hurdle you know what I mean you know Good. for sure. Very good point. Absolutely. That's what I mean by that. Yeah. You may. Okay. I still have my mom here. We don't have the best relationship in the world, but at least she's here. She's on yeah. this planet. I still have my mother. So I can't imagine not having either parent in your case. Bless you. Bless you for that. Yeah. Um, and the strength. But I still that got my siblings, which is great. <laughs> it is great and, and mm -hmm. good for you. But there's still something about being able to call mom or dad that I'm sure you miss, you know what I mean? If you were close to either one of your parents. Mm, yeah. 
And this is what I tell people too when they've lost uh, anybody in their life. Even my dog, I talk to him probably every day. And he's just like, mom, I'm still here, mom. Because energy never, I think it's energy cannot be created or destroyed. Yes. Energy as in human beings is the same way. It, can, it can't be just created or destroyed even though we're born. We come from spirit. We come from energy. We come from frequency. So yeah. your parents are still with you. That, that love never dies. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? That love never goes away. That kind of love is is here forever. So, yeah, and the strength that that it takes you to get through every single freaking day is amazing too. You know. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I, I remember I will never forget. This is how I know um, angels are real. Um, I was at it was like in the winter time. This is like mm-hmm. ten years ago, and I didn't have on my toboggan or a hat. Yeah, and I went into a grocery store. And this um, lady who I didn't know mm-hmm. behind the counter of the deli, she was like, um, why you ain't got nothing on your head? And when she said that, she sounded exactly like my mom. So I think like my mom whispered in her ear to say something like that. I said, because she, she said it exactly like my mom. I was like, OK, I see. You. I, I see you, mom. I, OK, oh. I, I need to put something on my head. I'm telling you, it was it was a real, real um, amazing moment. <laughs> Emmanuel, that was your mom. I, you know. They have people, I don't know if you know about channeling and how people channel spirits and stuff oh, yeah. like that. I've heard of that before? That sounds like your mom channeled herself right through that woman at that moment because her son was out there with her. Yep. Without a, like, come on now. That was yeah. powerful. Oh, now, diva culture. Yes. What does that mean? Diva culture. Oh, my. Okay, you're going to laugh at this. So when I did that 105 interviews, in 2000, <laughs> some of the fans, there was two things that happened. Some of the fans were calling themselves the Dauntourage. Okay. And calling themselves that. I never said that. Like, that to me was like, whoa, you guys are so powerful. Dauntourage. Boom. Like, that was like, whoa. And, do you, oh, some of the fans were saying, um, Dawn, you're doing it for the culture with a C. Okay. <laughs> regular way the culture is supposed to be spelled and I was like what do you mean by that and one of them explained in a DM what you're doing and talking to us as fans is for the culture it's for the people like mm. you're such a healer you're such a, a light in the world I was like okay wow first of all thank you father and mother god and thank you to the fans for that because that's like powerful to say that to me yeah so when I was coming up with a name for my brand, first I had Stiletto and then my former manager, who I shouldn't have listened to, but I, I'm kind of glad I did because I came up with something else. He said, you need something with your name in it. And then he came up with Dawn, uh, what was it, Miss Robinson. I was like, eh, I don't love that, but he created it anyway. And then when we parted ways, I was like, I need something else. I need another name. I need a better name. And even though Diva Culture doesn't have my name in there. I spell it D-V-A, K-U-L-T-U-R-E, because I was like, let me do it different. Of course, I'm creative. So I was like, I don't want to spell it with culture like a C, but culture with a K. Um, And it just became, uh, as I said it more and as I'm saying it to people and and putting it out there, it's my brand, Diva Culture. So that's my LLC. That's my um, that's my brand and my domain name. All of that stuff is D-V-A Culture. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love it. So it's a little confusing, too, because people are like, okay, your YouTube channel page is called Official Dawn Robinson because I need people to find me. Right, of course. It's like you got to have your name in there. As a celebrity, I have to have my name in there. And then I'm like, yeah, but Diva Culture is the name of my brand. And then Shine is the name of my show. Yeah, so I, so recently I told my um, business partner, I mean, my... um one of my assistants to take the diva culture part out of the intro. And then I'll build that up later because there's too many names. It's like official Dawn Robinson, diva culture, and then shine was just S H H Y N E because H S H I N E was taken. So I had to do shine with two N's and a Y, (laughs) you know, yeah. Is uh, is um now at the very beginning 
There's somebody mm -hmm. saying diva culture, baby. Is that you? Yeah. Yep. That nice. was my intro because we didn't have an intro. Like I said, he can't do an intro to put on my, so we just did a, a generic one and put it up like that. Diva culture, baby. baby. Yeah. Nice. So, so I'm gonna know like how can people uh, of course through the um YouTube, but also how can people reach you like if they want to like just say hey or anything like that? Um they can find me um oh boy, so official dawn official dawn robinson, which is my YouTube. Uh but they can also find me on I think it's on Instagram, it's Dawn Robinson DBA. Ooh, I think it's Dawn Robinson DBA. <laughs> <laughs> and then Do you Twitter. have a Twitter account? Now X, yeah, it's called X now. Um, but Dawn Dawn Robinson on there as well. And then uh I have I have TikTok now, which is also Dawn Robinson. And then um I have Facebook, which I'm hardly on anymore. I don't know. Facebook doesn't respond the way Instagram mm. is. you've noticed that. But you put yeah. something post something and Instagram, they gave it the right name because it's instant. Everything is like right now. Mm. And they respond. But yeah, Facebook is very slow, if at all. You don't hear it from anybody. They don't respond. They don't chime in. They're not very aggressive when it comes to giving their opinions about anything. It's just very quiet. Uh, different audience, and I understand that. So I'm hardly there, but it is it is Facebook, Dawn Robinson. Facebook is Dawn Robinson. Okay. Well, again, like I say, thank you so much for your time. Thank You're you welcome. for being my first guest. Thank, thank you. you for being, for being patient. <laughs> We are. Yes. I'm proud of that. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. I, it was great hearing from you. And um, um, <laughs> thanks again for being a part of the show. I appreciate it. <laughs> proud of you again, I have to say. I'm so proud of you. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being a part of the show. <laughs>